I'm Percy Blandford. I live in Stratford-on-Avon, in, right in the middle of England. Uh -huh. I've been a member of the International Guild of Knot Tires since it, its inauguration. We didn't have a president for the first 12 months, but for the next year I was president. So you were the first president of the guild? I was the first president of the guild. Uh -huh. It was a much smaller thing there, and although we had the same name as we have now, it was called the International Guild of Knot Tires. I began to wonder at first about this term international. Should we attract many people from overseas? Mm -hmm. Of course, nowadays we have, and I think the membership now mm -hmm. is more than 50% overseas mm -hmm. uh, compared with English. But in those days, the uh, total membership didn't reach 200, I don't think. In the first year, it was right. probably not much over 100. And today, of course, we've just had a meeting with well over a hundred mm -hmm. members uh, sitting around in the same room. So we so, couldn't have done that then. No. Now, now you're 90 years old. Yeah, and I, 91. <laughs> I understand you're still a working journalist. I am, yes. You've published over a hundred books. Yes, I've published 111 books. Uh, six or seven of those have been on dotting. Uh -huh. uh, all of them are non-fiction. I'm not a novelist. But uh, most of them are practical books and mainly woodwork and metalwork. I understand you used to make kayak kits. Yes, I, I didn't make them, I designed them. You designed them? I designed uh, boats of all sorts, but largely, uh, to start with, it was kayaks. Mm -hmm. And I think I must almost certainly now have sold more boat plants in the world than anyone else. Than anyone else. Uh, we, we, thought the thing was running into the ground recently and we finally stopped. But that's over nearly 60 years of selling boat plans <laughs> and the total is 176,000. Wow. Now how did you actually come by meeting Jeffrey Budworth and Des Posson and get invited to the first meeting? Well I'd already written some books on uh, rope work and uh, Des... This was, this was over 20 years ago now over the 20 years, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I'd written the first knotting book, I suppose, 30 years ago. Okay. And uh, they called this inaugural meeting, um, and I heard from Geoffrey Budworth then, and I was invited, but unfortunately I couldn't get to that actual first meeting, so sent an apology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I've been turning up at just about every meeting ever since. So and my wife has. She's in, she was interested in McCrabby. Uh -huh. She died last year. Oh. And she was the uh, first supply secretary of the guild. Yeah, yeah. Uh, must have done the job for about 10 years. Uh -huh. And she sent books from all the other publications all over the world. But you, did you know Jeffrey and Des before? I didn't know them before, no. They knew of me because of my writing, Because you'd I be suppose, writing. And that was why they got in touch uh -huh. with me. Well, they told me that uh, that, a new, that there was a claim of a new knot that had been invented, and they were called in to, to authenticate it. And that's, that's how they got together and originated the idea of the guild itself. It could have been, yes. Yeah. Uh, that new knot has turned out to be something that was already in Ashley, yes. apparently, yes. under another name. I understand. And for another use. Yeah. But it is there. But your, so your interest in knots and rope work goes back oh, ten, uh, ten years before the guild at least, or more. Time. Oh yes, uh, yeah. I, I joined the Scouts, the Cub Scouts, yeah. when I was eight. What, what year would have that been? That, oh, have been. Uh, that would have been 1928, is it? Yeah. 1920. Yeah. I joined the Cubs and I've been a boy, in the Boy Scout Association ever since. Yeah. And that's really where I got my original interest in knotting and rope work. Uh -huh. And that seems to apply to a very large number of the it, English members of the guild. It does, yeah. Well, let me ask you, now I'm a, I'm a new member. I've only been in the guild two years. Yes. Okay, and I came to my knotting interest later in life. You know, when uh, if you were going to talk to potential guild members, you know, what would you say is the is the benefits of being in the, a member of the guild and, uh, and that well, sort of thing? Well, obviously it's a specialist organization. Mm -hmm. Not every member of the public is going to be interested in knotting. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But most people want to know how to tie up parcels and to do up their shoelaces properly mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. And to demonstrate a few basic knots, I suppose, introduces people and then if they've got any interest at all, they're likely to want mm -hmm. to follow it up. And as you look so, back over all these years of your own membership in the Guild, you know, what's been really important to you that's come out of all of that? Well, I suppose it's the fellowship of other people that are interested in the same thing. Uh, a lot of people who are keen on knot time tend to feel they're in isolation. And then you meet a crowd of other people who've got the same interests as you, and you swap tails and swap different methods of uh, tied knots. Particularly uh, some of the things like Turk's Head. I've been talking to a man today who is still trying uh, all sorts of different uh, starts and uh, turns of, of uh, Turk's Head. He's been sitting here nearly all day just doing that on his lap. Right. Uh, it's not my line, mind. I'm more interested in practical rope work. I, I have rigged ships uh -huh. and uh, spliced wire and uh, that sort of thing. I'd right. rather do rather applied knotting to the practical application. More than the decorative knotting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've done tests on various knots to find out which was strongest under certain circumstances mm -hmm. and things like that. Well, I've always heard that the ice splice is the strongest knot. Well, the, the ice splice is a very good example, yes, but uh, there are a few variations on it. Mm -hmm. And with modern synthetic ropes, mm -hmm. they're smooth, of course, because yes. they're made from continuous filaments instead right. of short fibers. Right. You've got to have a lot more tucks in than you would have for a, 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 a natural fiber rope. That's right. I first came across them, for instance, during the war, I was in the Royal Air Force and I was on a, a station, an airfield as you call it, where they were training army pilots, army glider pilots for the invasion of Europe and uh, we were using tug aircraft, first of all with hemp ropes mm -hmm. and they were only given a 10 tug life and then they were scrapped mm -hmm. and then it came nylon. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen nylon before. That was the first synthetic I'd seen. That would have been about 1942 or three. Mm -hmm. And that has got a, an incredible stretch, of course. Mm -hmm. And we were using them almost indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Well, so the first president is here after 20 years, still coming to meetings and That's still right. enjoying the fellowship and encouraging people to uh, take a look at nodding. That's it. Thanks for your time. Okay.